Uh, so, so with that being said, let's get to the topic of the conversation. Is it time for a black man to start taking control of the narr- their own narrative? Now, um, with that one, some of you guys, I was, some of y'all probably saw the title and if you watch my show, you know this is what I'm about. I have been saying this for, for a long time that black men do not have control of their own narrative. They don't. They don't control the media. They have no control in media. So how can they control their own narrative? So what they said, what about black women? See, here's the truth part. Black women always had daytime uh, television. You can go back to the 80s and now you had Oprah Winfrey. Uh, They had, uh, uh, Jesus, I forgot these uh, people's names. Those talk shows uh, back in the day that we have to ask because we have to sit there and watch. Or some of us will sneak away and go play with our toys. They own the Cosmic Cosmic uh Cosmetology magazine, all this other stuff. They always had an outlet for black women to listen to. And so the basically like everybody had a voice. The white man had a voice. The white woman had a voice. Black women had a voice. Black men did not. So it was easy for them to control the narrative about what black men, who black men are, what they do, what they're about, and that type of stuff. So, what do black men need to do? And I won't believe that black men was busy doing something else. Particularly going out there on their jobs, working, providing for the family, this, that, and the third. To the point where it's like, as long as we do this, we don't, need, we don't need to worry about the narrative. Now, that's an L on, the, on our part. I have openly admitted that. Now, the thing about this is, how do we fix this? Although we started to take control of it when the pandemic happened. 2020 was a good year. It was a sad year, a tough year, but it was a good year for black men, in my opinion, because we was able to start opening up and taking back what's ours, which is our voice. Here's what needs to be done. We need an independent network TV, radio, what well, not necessarily radio, because that's a, a dying field. Um, TV, audio, whatever the case may be, online. We need to corner a market for black men. It needs to be controlled by black men. The priority needs to be black men. The voices need to be black men. The narrative needs to be said by black men. That's the problem with what's going, what was going on back then, and it's starting to change now. Once you do that, you can control the narrative. You can fund the narrative. You can broadcast the narrative to every black man that needs to hear it, especially black men that are under the roof of feminism. So, what's so the question is, what am I doing? Well, I got a YouTube platform, Clubhouse platform, social media platform. Like, I'm on a website. So, what am I doing with that? My space is a hub for black men. Black men, Mikasa Sukasa. You're more than welcome to come here. You're more than welcome to voice your opinions. But I agree or disagree with it. It means nothing. Let's at least have a conversation. And let's figure out um, where we can land with this. Let's say they sounded to me. Don't know how far you're going to get, honestly. And we'll get to... uh, um, attacking people at the moment because uh, Tommy uh, Sotomayor did a uh, was a guest on the people let's talk tonight and he brought some of this up I have too many outlets to get my to get my point across I have too many outlets to remain silent I'm going to say what I'm going to say and no one's going to uh, stop me 
because I'm not violating anybody's life. I'm not violating anybody's liberty. I'm not violating anybody's uh, property. So as long as those things are not compromised, no one can really stop me without consequences being there. So a lot of a lot of issues, a lot of reasons why you don't you haven't seen a lot of men's voices back then is because there was consequences. Or there was the facade of consequences and nobody knew that there was nothing there. There was nothing holding them back. Legally, there was nothing holding them back. And legally, they can say what they want and be protected. But like I said, if not legally, there's consequences for those who tend to silence your voice. So black men, you need to stand up and take control of your narrative, take control of your voice, so that way you can take back control of what always belongs to you, and that is your spot within the community. So let's get into this. Uh, what's real, real quick? Uh, Tommy said the only space black men had was barbershops and now online. That's that's a fact. Uh, back then, a lot of people just kept that in the barbershop and just kept the book. Now that we have a open space, an online space, we can now speak our mind, say what we need to say. No one's going to hold us. No one's going to stop us. So, and I think that's why a lot of people is, uh, for the most part, is fearful of black men is because everything that you did to hold black men back is not going to come back to haunt them tempo and there's nothing that's going to stop them. And all the thing is, black men just want the, um, they want the um, voices. They want to be heard. They want to take control of their narrative. So that was when you say the usual goofy stuff, uh, what do you say? Black men rob, kill, their um, hobosexuals, and also homosexuals as well. When you take control of the marriages, then you start to realize that doesn't have much power, and now you're stuck looking like, oh shit, what have you done? So a lot of people fear black um, men regarding that because they feel like revenge is around the corner. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I just say this, is you need to give back. If you don't give back what belongs to black men, they're going to have to find a way to take it from you. So I just say, give them, stop trying to oppress their voice and let them talk and let them speak. So, now, uh, real pressure said that you don't need permission to be a man. That's a fact. That's why I said, if you stop, that's why I said, Stop trying to oppress the uh, black man's uh, voice because once they realize, example, nobody's afraid of a lion for the most part when it's in its cage. Nobody's afraid of a lion when it's locked up in its cage. But what's gonna happen one day if somebody so happy to leave that door unlocked? And the lion just know he just needs to do a simple push and he's free. Nobody's ready for that. Especially when that lion is a black man. All he's gonna do is just push the door and realize he's free. And once he remembers that he is a lion, is there anything that's really gonna stop him for the most part? No. So, to the pressures, you don't need permission to be a man. Just be a man. And Lady Chan, black men are not modelists, which is correct. But that, no, that's, a, uh, that's a fact. Well, yeah, black men are not modelists, and that's fine. So, let the black men come together, and let's figure it We can still figure this out. Your opinions may be different than mine, but... I'm not going to silence your uh, opinion outside of the uh, far left extremist, that type of stuff. But when it comes to uh, black men, we may not, we may have different views, different beliefs, different political worldviews, but the, the commonality is a, we're a black man. 
and let and we're gonna have each other's uh back we're gonna move as uh one regardless 